I know you're gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. When it comes to love, it's all in the know how. The timing, the kiss, and the chemistry. But what do I know? As feelings go now And you've been thinking what's wrong with me What's going on everybody? How are you doing today? Here I am in Aurelia, Ontario, Canada. Canada is my home. Ontario is my province. Aurelia is about an hour and a half from Toronto where I live. And I'm standing outside the former home, the childhood home of Gordon Lightfoot. I think everybody knows Gordon Lightfoot. Everybody knows at least one Gordon Lightfoot song. He's extremely popular here in Canada and has success all around the world. And I've got two special guests coming with me. We're going to go to a bunch of Gordon Lightfoot locations and end up paying tribute at his grave in this video. Let me introduce you to my friends. So these are my friends, Brian and Kevin. How's it going, everybody? Hello, YouTube land. Brian just started a YouTube channel. Brian and I have known each other for a very long time. Kevin was a viewer of my channel. I got to know him and his wife. And if you have watched any of my Florida, fake Florida videos, Kevin is the cameraman that I badger throughout the video. And he does. <laughs> Off camera. <laughs> and a car coming, so we're gonna back, back up a bit. So Brian knows a lot about Gordon Lightfoot, about as much as me. You know, we're fan, as you can see, he's got an Iron Maiden shirt on. But very he does like, yeah, very similar type of music. Yeah. Kevin grew up here in Aurelia went to the same high school as Gordon Lightfoot, correct? Different years. Different years, yes, 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 different years. But you know a lot about Gordon Lightfoot, you're a big fan. Yeah, I am a big fan. You were the one that talked me into, not talked me into doing this video, but said, For years I've been telling you to come up here and do Gordon Lightfoot. Right, right. Well, we're here. Let's take a look at the house. All right. There it is, right there. That is the childhood home of Gordon Lightfoot, right here on Harvey Street in Aurelia. Kind of not giving anything away. It's a very well known, right, Kevin? That is. Very well known that this is this house. And you can tell me that this house used to look very, very different, right? It had a, uh, a balcony up top that's above that second or the entranceway and a roof line there where you can see the line is still there with a the, um, porch. Yeah, it looked a lot different. Yeah. Not a lot different, but it just looked better. So you think, I mean, this house has been here since the 30s. That's right. right? He was born in 1938. Yeah. 1938, wow. And this is where he lived for his early years and early teen years. That's right. So we're going to go to the high school location. The high school, well, we won't give it away about his high school yet, but there's something cool That's in right. town having to do with his high school. There is. Okay, Kevin, when you think of Gordon Lightfoot, first song that comes to your mind. If you can read my mind. Right. And early morning rain. And did she mention my name? <laughs> <laughs> Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Not the wreck of the... Ella Fitzgerald, what I said yesterday. <laughs> right, but we were talking about... But I know it's Edmund. It was a mistake. <laughs> Edmund Fitzgerald. I'm getting old. Famous shipwreck in Lake Superior at the bottom of uh, Lake Superior right now. And mine, I would say Carefree Highway. Love that song. Which they want to rename Highway 11 to Aurelia. Right. The Carefree Highway. See, this is why you're here. You because you told me that the other day. I was like, wow, they're going to rename a highway. That's crazy. Carefree Highway. All right, let's go to the next location. There's the house. So this is where Gordon went to school, huh? This is obviously being, uh, it's, the school was torn down, they're building, and the school was just torn down. Right. And they're building this. And But if you're, if you're standing here out of your peripheral, this is the same footprint. This looks, it's about the exact same height. It's about the exact same shape. It looks like the side of the high school. But uh, it's gonna be uh, wow. um, housing, obviously. But. And it was just torn down. It was. And it was, and didn't, two, there were two high schools here in Aurelia, correct? Uh, Park something or three. Park Street, Twin Lakes, and OD. OD. This was OD. OD CBI. So Gordon Lightfoot went to school, and you went to school. You're different years. I did so. Yeah, separated by a few years for sure. But yeah, so this is where his high school used to end. Now, it's interesting to see the location, to see where it used to be. But what's kind of really cool, because someone like me who likes weird stuff, is there's actually something in town to do with the high school that's still around, right? That's true, and that's. Even the, this high school, they had rebuilt, when I started high school, they had torn down the original section and rebuilt a new modern-ish right. um, section. 
And anyway, this don't reveal. Don't reveal. At, yeah, don't reveal it. Put on the original section, which would have been there when Gorgo was right. So cool. All right, so now we're gonna go show you something from the school and hit Main Street where there's just everything Gordon Lightfoot, right? That's right. I mean, he is Aurelia's hero. They do a good job. Yeah, let's go. Walking towards the Opera House here in downtown Aurelia, right, Kevin? Right. And what were you saying? He played here how many times? Like, just... I couldn't count. Every time he came home to Aurelia, he always played here, and he would do benefit concerts, whether it be for the hospital or whatever. And uh, but yeah, this is and the auditorium in here is named after him. Wow. That's really good. Yeah, that is good. Wow. Gordon Lightfoot, born in Aurelia, singer-songwriter, born in Aurelia, 1938. If you can read my mind, Alberta bound, sundown, carefree highway, wreck of the Evan Fitzgerald, Cotton Jenny, rainy day people. That's another good song that's of his. A good one too. And actually, pictures. There's pictures of him standing right here. Oh, really? He came and posed with himself. Oh wow! Beautiful. Pussy Willows, Cattails, Canadian Railroad Trilogy, Ribbon of Darkness, Early Morning Rain for Loving Me, Song for a Winter's Night. He's got to be more on this side. He's got tons, yeah. Don Quixote, Rainy Day People, Old Dance Records, Did She Mention My Name, Coochie Ching, The Way I Feel, Steel Rail Blues. That is wild. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at the building. I I've been to really many times. Never noticed how amazing this building is. So these guitars are here for him? Every year they do, whether it be sailboats, uh, they've done chairs, they've done, they pick a theme. And one year they did guitars and a lot of them had Gordon Lightfoot on them and because of his passing that I think that was four years ago the guitars went they brought them all back they're on Main Street being nice. played again wow I have a feeling it's right around this corner isn't it it is yeah. yes what we're looking for down the end of Main Street we're going to make an immediate right and it's going to be here it's gone. It is gone. It's gone. What the heck? Oh no. I've never noticed that before. That's where it's at, right there. For where is it? Years and years. I have no idea. Isn't that weird? This is even called Collegiate Court because of that. Isn't that funny? Well, Kevin, it, it's not your fault, <laughs> but I kind of blame you. Yeah. It, I looked it up on Street View and it was that. still here. It used to be the bell tower from the right. high school. That's what I just said. there. Ever since that was torn down, it's sat here. And I'm, yeah, I'm shocked that it's not there. Wow. Somebody's got to have it. Just yesterday, I was looking at I was like, okay, it's theirs. That's where it's at. Well, Brian, as a new YouTuber, just to let you know, sometimes things just, just don't work out the way you want them. Uh, somebody's, I mean, maybe it's being repaired or being... Could be, yeah. This is actually called the Legion Court because of it. So. That's wild. I can't believe it's gone. Yeah, well, that's an investigation. I'm going to figure out where Yeah, that you might. figure out where that is. Well, Geraldo's vault has been opened. There is nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we got lots more to show you for going to Lightfoot's life here in Aurelia. Yeah, lots of guitars now. This, this is for uh, his song, Pussy Willow Cattails. And there he is on the front. He's on the side? Well, it's a silhouette. So let's talk a bit of first, Brian, because we were talking in the car about how he got started. He right? got started in high school, being in the well, he actually got started at his church. Right, he was being in the a, he was singing in the choir, but his right. voice changed, and then he had to kind of learn right. guitar. To then he did a quartet in high school, and uh, would travel around to local bars and stuff, even in Beaverton. If right. anybody ever heard of that, and. Uh, that's where he got to start. And then he wanted to go out to LA to learn songwriting and music, and that's what he did. Right. Then where'd he go? England. He came back to Toronto. Toronto, yeah. He came back, but went to Toronto. Yeah. And, uh, he has two homes in Toronto that I know of. Well, it's yes, that's right. The, we're gonna go to that, I'm gonna go to that house. I'll put that in 
great. Big parties at that house. Right. Bob Dylan. Everybody yeah. went through that house. Christmas time. Yeah. So you guys are coming with me to that location because you guys live north. And I live in the city. Sure. So I'm going to cut those in right now of me visiting two of Gord's, Gord's house in Toronto. So here I am on Beaumont Road, which is just off of, if you're from Toronto, Bloor and um, Castle Frank Avenue. This is uh, a very, very nice neighborhood, to say the least. This home in front of me, this is Gordon Lightfoot's home. It's been on the market a couple of times, once uh, for nine million, once for 11 million. Yeah. So you can see the house beside looks kind of similar, but that's Gordon's old home right there. And it's a pretty legendary house. He owned it for quite a long time. And Bob Dylan had a concert. A roving Woodstock, uh, Rolling Thunder Review, went through a bunch of cities. When they stopped in Toronto, Gordon Lightfoot performed uh, on stage. So it was Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, Joni Mitchell, you know, legends and Gordon Lightfoot. And that window there you see on your right, that flips around, it's big, you know, what do you, how do you describe it? Right under the chimney there, goes around. There's some famous photos in that room of Bob Dylan and Gordon Lightfoot. Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, Bob Dylan up against, I think probably would be that window, a solo one of him, so. I mean, just because what happened was they came back here. Gordon Lightfoot invited everybody back for a party. And man, did they party. The bottom part of the house was where everybody was just, you know, doing what you do in 1975. Whatever you do. <laughs> they were partying hard from what, I, from what I've heard. But Gordon and Bob went up to there, to that room there, and uh, jammed. And Joni came up. Now, he wrote so many songs here. I know for sure he wrote Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald in this house, but apparently there's, I can't see, there's a, sh a shack, they call it, out back, where he wrote most of his songs. Now, if you look there, right beside it, that's a garage in the back, a little garage attached to possibly a bit of a house there. That's, you know, that garage is a nice size for a house, it looks like. So I don't know if they really call it a shack where he did it, but who knows? So it's hard to get a really good shot. The owner just drove out or, or whoever, and there's somebody walking around the property. But um, I can tell you the car they were driving spoke to me as celebrity-esque because it's, it's a giant um, like Ford Escape or like Lincoln, whatever, you know, the giant black tinted SUVs you see celebrities being driven around and I don't know, it drove out and came back in. But that's Gordon Lightfoot's home. This is not where he was living in the later years of his life, but this is his, probably his most famous home in Toronto. It's the best view I'm gonna get you. And let's go, well, let's see what I can see from over here. I can see a little bit more. It's got a turret to the left, just like that opera house in Aurelia, right there. Wow. Very cool. It's not a private road or anything. These houses are all very expensive. You come down, you know, take a picture, take a look. And from this angle, it's gonna be your best view. You can see everything you need to see. Look at that. Wow. On the grounds of Sunnybrook Health Science Center, Sunnybrook Hospital, for people who live in Toronto. And it is huge. It is one of the biggest hospitals here in Toronto, for sure. I mean, look at this, so many buildings, and it's just being built up, built up all the time. I've been to this hospital many times when my mother was sick. Brought it here so many times for various things. And this week, when life passed away, natural causes, uh, just in May of 2020. Minutes from his uh, house that we're going to. It's about 15 minutes from the house we just left. And, you know, he suffered very similar in his life. Bell's 
Halsey, he had a minor stroke, I think around 2006. It was natural causes that claimed Gordon Lightfoot in the end. It is a big, big complex. I mean, well, there, that says it all. Buses actually go through this area here. And, you know, there's more, more buildings everywhere. It is a huge, huge area here. And, um, yeah. It's not too far from both of his famous homes in Toronto. Kind of right in the middle. And now we're going to move on to the home that Gordon Lightfoot bought in 1999. Over in the Bridal Path District. Which is the most expensive area of real estate in Canada. And probably, I mean, probably in the world. It's beautiful. And I've done a video from there before showing off all the houses. I think I'm going to do a new one at some point. But Gordon Lightfoot had a home there. If you could read my mind, did him very well. And constant touring. And people licensing his songs. He made a good living. Quite a success story. Here we are. 16 Park Lane Circle in the Bridal Path area. This was Gordon Lightfoot's home since 1999. I believe there's a famous picture of him right on that uh, doorstep there. Right there. And in the front room, I guess, which is maybe off to the right there with another, looks like a turret. He likes turrets. Uh, apparently where he wrote most of his songs is mahogany lined. He liked to look over the front lawn. He wrote a lot of songs in there. That's a very, very rich area of Toronto. This is a bridal path district. These are the most expensive homes. They are beautiful. The Mean Girls house, Regina George's house from Mean Girls is here. Gordon's house right here behind me. He bought it for around three million, something like that, in 1999. Last time I heard it was appraised at 12 million almost. That was in 2016. I can guarantee you it's worth a lot more. Just the land in this area is worth so much. If it's empty, like if it's vacant and you can build a house, because they're always tearing down houses here and rebuilding bigger ones. How they get bigger, I don't know, but they do. That's a great shot of his house. Let's take a look. All right, see a little bit more. So it's the back of the other house, but that's his house right there. And back in the day, back when I was in high school, we would drive around here looking at the big houses. These were rough streets. The houses were all celebrities and beautiful and big. But the houses, uh, I mean, they have speed bumps. Uh, but the roads, sorry, were just like broken and like bad. But apparently the residents wanted it that way to deter people from coming and looking at the big houses. That was what we believed, we were told. But now they're... They've gotten over that, it looks, and paid with speed bumps, but it's a beautiful, beautiful era. And he often said, well, he didn't often say, he said once, he said he's uh, honored to have Drake as a neighbor and that he would go over to Drake's house for breakfast sometime maybe and have some coffee and maybe his mom, Drake's mom, would come and stop by here and they would have some talks. That's what Gordon Lightfoot said when he heard that Drake was going to be his neighbor because Drake's house is right there. See where that car is? That's his security outside. They're always here. But Drake's house is right there. And it's huge. And I think he maybe knew. Once he knew Gordon Lightfoot lived right across the street, that kind of sealed the deal for him to build his house right there. Because Drake loves Canada. I love Drake. And I think for that very reason, how much he loves Canada and how much he, he talks about it, how much he gives back. He's very philanthropic. So uh, maybe, you know, that was, a, that was a bit of a, you know, something he was like, hey, Gordon Lightfoot, legend, lives right across the street. Yeah, I want the house there. Yeah, Drake, very generous and very supportive of so many different communities in Toronto and very, gives back. And to me, that says it all about a guy like that. And I think it would be an honor to... Uh, live near Gordon Lightfoot too. So I never use Wikipedia really. I try not to use it. I put it in the description for keywords, hi. And, uh, but I don't use it for like, um, for my research, because you never know. And I like to get research from other places online. But this certain tidbit about the song Sundown, one of Gordon Lightfoot's biggest songs, the information always came back to Wikipedia. It always said, source Wikipedia. So I went to Wikipedia and that's where I read it. Apparently, the song Sundown was written about Kathy Smith, who we had a relationship with in the early 70s. Now, Kathy Smith, if you don't know who that is, she's, 
She's the one that gave John Belushi the speedball that killed him in California. I've done a video on that. Which I was like, what? She was up here. I knew she was from Canada, but I didn't know she was involved with Gordon Lightfoot at all. But apparently he, there was a pretty volatile relationship. And he wrote the song Sundown after she went out to some bars with some friends and was partying. And he stayed home and wrote a song about her. But it didn't last long. He was not dating her at the time uh, when everything went down with Belushi. But yeah, interesting. And I uh, may or may not have already mentioned my friend Jory Nash in the video. I will mention him, or I already have. The song that I'm going to choose a song of his to play as I go into the grave, uh, graveyard cemetery to see Gordon Lightfoot's final resting place. I'm going to play one of Jory's songs. I don't have the rights to Gordon Lightfoot's, but Jory lets me use his music. Yeah, this is the Bridal Path. This is Gordon Lightfoot's house right here. Amazing. So I decided to stop by and just around, just up the street a little bit. I'm in my car right now as I was driving away and I thought I'm gonna get on talk to the security guard at Drake's because, you know, I pass by all the time. They wave, they're so nice. And he told me that uh, Gordon Lightfoot's uh, girlfriend still lives here. She's from LA, I believe, but she still lives in the house. He just saw her two days ago. And he said, he saw Gordon Lightfoot quite a bit. And he said he was a very, very nice dude and he loves Gordon Lightfoot's music. That's what I was told by Drake's security guard. Very cool. So if somebody is still inhabiting the house, just looks empty or looks quiet, but no. And he said, Drake's the best boss in the world. That's great. We're back. What else do you want to say about Gordon Life for Brian? Jeez. I know, I we got a spot. Yeah, I am on the spot. Uh, so I'll, I'll, do I want to tell my Serpent Mound story? I don't know if that's of any interest. I don't know. <laughs> well, he hit it big in the 70s, right? He was a songwriter for, and a lot of people were covering his music. Elvis. Barbara Streisand, Peter Paul and Mary, Peter Paul and Mary uh, Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash, Sil Ian and Sylvia, right? And but then what was the Neil Young, Neil Young fellow Canadian? What song brought burst him through into the international spotlight? You know, which song, sir? Which song was that made him famous in the states and this World first War? one was uh, Early Morning Rain. Mm, I was gonna say if you could read my mind. Mm, I think that's the ones that, that all the big guys are covered. Yeah, but if you could read my mind, for him as a solo artist, I'm talking for him as a singer, if you could read well, my mind, was the one. He always, even at the opera house, he said, this is what bopping my house, and he was, uh, if you could read my mind. Really? Yeah, yeah if you could read, I mean, like, it's yeah. been covered by everybody. Yeah, that's right. The yeah. disco version of it, which is great, yeah, Ultra Nate, yeah. yeah, it's a great version. Disco and, version. Yeah, yeah, from, <laughs> from the 54th oh, soundtrack, yeah. It's a great one. Yeah. Ultra Nate, Nate, the artist, and a few other artists all teamed up to, if you could read my mind. Gord right there. I want to give a big shout out. Hold on. If any of you have been watching my channel for a long time, you notice I use music by an artist named Jory Nash, who's semi-retired now. Um, Jory, you got to come back. Uh, Jory's one of my best friends, and I love him to death. And he actually had a tribute concert every year to Gordon Lightfoot, where him and fellow folk artists would play uh, Gordon Lightfoot songs. And he, Gordon Lightfoot showed up to a couple of them. And they came on stage for a couple of them. So Jory actually knows Gordon Lightfoot, which is just incredible. New Gordon Lightfoot, I should say. So a big shout out to Jory. And if you look through some of my older videos, you'll see I've used a lot of his music and I will continue to do so. Can't get it online. A lot of people ask me, where's his music? He took it all offline. But with some arm twisting, maybe. Maybe we can get Jory to put his whole catalog because it's incredible. He's, he was my Gordon Lightfoot growing up for sure. Sort of, it sounds cheesy, but he kind of was. I love all of his music, and he's very similar sound to Gordon Lightfoot, and he's super talented. Jory, this video is for you, man. Wow. Look at that. This is crazy. Look at that. All for Gord. So it's funny that you said he made his, uh, like, bought his house with, if you could read my mind money, because he had a string of hits in the 70s, but then the 80s kind of, slow, not slowed down, but his, the, the, I guess the demand for Gordon Life for music. Yeah, he was doing live performances. Yeah, mostly live. But then the 90s, he released a couple of albums yeah. that were very well received, and then he was touring right up until, he died. and 2020, he found some old demos from songs he wrote around 2002, 2003, and 
recorded them, yeah, yeah. released the album, and it, again, yeah. and success. And there's another album coming out, I still think. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And he was a big canoe. Well, did you watch that special? No, I didn't have time. He was a big canoeer? Yeah. Can, canoeist? Ten major canoe trips up north. Really? By himself? or? Uh, no, with some other guys. But right. That's when he quit drinking, so he knew that when he'd go on those canoe trips that he wouldn't have access to alcohol, and it helped him. Because when he quit, he quit, and that was it. That was the end of it. Wow. Because he had a problem with alcohol one time. and uh, So, yeah, he would do that. And what does that say? Tide Hope Park? Tide Hope Park. That's where that other big statue thing is. Okay. And that's where Mariposa Folk Festival is that he came to every year. Right, the Mariposa Folk Festival has been around for a long, yeah. lot longer than I, I knew it was. Yeah, and he was kind of the headliner for right. year after year for came Canadian year. folk music. Yeah. yeah, even if it wasn't on the bill, he'd show up and surprise everybody every year, right up until like a year ago. Mm. So every time Gordon did an interview, he said he did it here. Yeah, he, he did multiple, multiple interviews here because this is where he started singing in the church choir. And this is where his family took him to church all the time. So whenever he'd come back to Araya for a CBC special or some interview, it always takes place in here. As well as his funeral and his wake was here as well. And the procession went up this street? It went up the side of this street. Rainy, rainy day. <laughs> they, they had it. Wow. Actually, from the news, our pictures of his passing. So it's Cassie came in through here, you said? Yeah. And you were here early, right? That's you're gonna give me some photos. We were and, actually here late. But there's nobody in the front pews right yet, right? Uh that was no, her. there was um because it was a lineup, you lined up here and went on the stage where the casket was sitting and walked behind it and walked all the way to the front and it took a while because people were signing the guest book and then came out these doors. Um, but there was some people sitting in the pews. His band members and stuff were on the stage with the casket talking to people. And um, How long was had, the service? I was just at the wake. So oh, you're oh, at the wake. Oh, okay. So, and they had screens playing uh, with him live and talking right. and playing his music. And it was pretty cool. This is that. So his wake was held here then the next day the funeral. So this is for the record, they had Ben Fitzgerald right here. Tud Hope Park, right? Yeah. That's where we are. Oh, we got it on the street. Yeah. Oh, on the church too, for the bell ring 39 times. Yeah. And I think distinctly Canadian would be getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at them on the screen. That's wild. sun oh you little moon all eyes are focused on the hour cause when the day is done i can never move caught with the moon shining down on me i'll never be stars everything is new i like the poetry and power but you love it all like it was meant for you stars and signs and energy, energy, energy. you'll never be alone but i could never fool Okay, so it reads Lightfoot, Gordon M, 1910 to 1974, 
Jesse V, 1909, 1998, Together Forever. That is Gordon Lightfoot's parents. You can see people left guitar picks, rocks, of course, flowers, the Canadian flag. So, Kevin, you were saying he was cremated. He was cremated, yep, and he was placed here. His name hasn't been inscribed on the stone yet, but right. I assume that'll be soon. Now, there's room for three more, yes. looks like. So, it's a family plot. I believe he had a sister that passed, too, and I thought she was here as well. From the photos I saw, he was buried here on the left, correct? I think, I think so. Yeah. What is the name of the cemetery again? This is St. James, St. Andrews Cemetery. Right. St. Andrews, St. James. Sorry. It's huge. It's the biggest it's cemetery in Aurelia by yes, far, yes? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it stretches all the way down along this tree. We drove past it earlier. Yes, we did. It's huge. The house is right across the street. And we should say while we're here as well, Brian, you're just thinking that you're probably going to be doing some walkthroughs of graves, cemeteries. Maybe. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting seeing when people lived, people died, and especially the old, a lot of the old headstones here. It's kind of my interest in history and... Right, because if people are going to watch your channel, you to know that you, you, for when it comes to history, you're kind of a beautiful mind. You know a lot. I like military history. That's, right. That's yeah. my main thing. Um, just reading, especially Canadian military history, so... Yeah. Uh, if I get the opportunity to go to a cemetery... I will. Yeah. Yeah. Great. But, uh, yeah. Very good. That's a nice hat. Nice hat. Right? There we go. So I've got a hat here. Cowboy hat. Courtesy of my friend Don Marie a few years ago. And I wore it around a few times. And usually I leave a rock if you watch my channel. I'm following with the Jewish tradition, of course. But uh, people bring rocks from all faiths. But I'm going to leave a hat there. I think that'll stay. So that maybe it might blow away like that, right? Put it right, right there. Perfect. All right, so that was our video all about Gore Lightfoot, his life here in Aurelia, his life in Toronto. We're here at his grave. Subscribe to Brian's channel. I'll put a link below. Kevin, thank you so much. Couldn't have done it without you. Okay, that's, no that's for this. That's for this. Yeah. Thanks for Brian. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, uh, invaluable. Grew up in the area, knows so much about going life. And distinctly Canadian. If you're Canadian, you know. And if you're from a different country, I'm sure you know I'm going life. Foot. And uh, I am Canadian. I spend a lot of time in the States. I am Canadian, believe it or not. <laughs> so peace, eh? All right, and rest in peace, Gore Life. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out.